Here's a list of things most preppers don't consider. Many preppers focus only on their pet catastrophes, such as pole shifting, a giant asteroid, or a plague. Just see the Doomsday Preppers show. However, you need to be prepared for any catastrophe. It's a fact that you can't be prepared for long-term catastrophe without being a multimillionaire or spending all your time on it. Eventually, the store of food and water will run out. Most preppers will store things, but few take the time to learn necessary skills like using a rain barrel and gardening. Storing all of your survival stuff in one place is putting all your eggs in one basket. Instead, hide your stuff in various locations in many rooms. Most survivalists haven't considered the effect their appearance will have when bugging out. They want to look their best. They buy new camo or black clothes. Looking like a well-equipped prepper will get you killed by other people who need your stuff. Instead, try to look like a beggar or panhandler. Most preppers never test their gear. They buy items and never use them. You need to go camping with your family and test things out. Get rid of the items that annoy you. Are you carrying a gun for self-protection? Many criminals can tell if you're capable of killing in self-defense. They grew up around guns and violence. Are you shaking while you point a gun at them? Does your face look like this, like you're afraid? Or does it look more confident, like this? Criminals scream when they are shot because of the pain. It's a fact that's left out of TV shows and movies. It's something you better be prepared for emotionally in case you must shoot someone in self-defense. If you're bugging in, sooner or later a group of police will come knocking. In the U.S., there are pro-law enforcement areas and those that aren't. They tend to fall along conservative and liberal lines. In your town, when an officer dies, do people line the streets and hold vigils? This will likely affect how police interact with you, either seizing your weapons or cooperating. It may affect whether you welcome them into your home and give them a warm hug or refuse to comply. Let's say you're bugging in and FEMA shows up demanding you evacuate. You never legally have to evacuate. If you do, your survival items will be seized and your house will be looted. You'll have no privacy, unable to leave, and dependent on the government to feed you. For people who are disabled, injured, elderly, or not prepared, you may be better off there. Anyway, you will be in a camp with many people, surrounded by armed guards and Constantino wire. Bring your toothbrush. In a long-term major catastrophe, the people in first world countries will have a very hard time because they aren't used to lack. In countries like Pakistan, People know how to go without water for a day or food for two to four days, whereas people in America are suicidal if they don't get their morning Starbucks. You can build your resilience many ways, by fasting or pulling all-nighters, for instance. Some of the above tips were inspired by this book by Joseph Terry. I hope you learned something new. If not, I am planning to make a part two with more tips. If you learned something, please hit like. Thank you for watching.